Hi, my name is Steve. We are a research group from University of Illinois, Virginia Tech, and Rayware. Today, I will talk about building machine learning applications for security with very limited of labels. Let's get started. Machine learning is a powerful tool for security applications. Here is how machine learning works for security. In the beginning, you collect some data. Then you label them either benign or malicious. You use your domain knowledge to design features to separate benign and malicious. Then <clears throat> you propose a machine learning model or use existing one to do the classification. The first four steps are at a training phase. In the testing phase, you collect the new data and test your proposed model. You can see how robust for your feature engineering and your proposed model. In this typical pipeline, however, three common challenges layer. First challenge, limited of labels. A robust machine learning model usually based on a good quality label data set to represent the target distribution. However, it is very time consuming to label the data. Second, attackers are changing over time. The malicious data is probably very different between now and one year ago. Third, general, generalizability. Most detection method depends on customized application specific features. For example, for fake account detection, you may design the features of the social graph. On the other hand, for fake review detection, you will design the features related to customer's review. Such a high customized features make it hard to share the picture models among services. In this work, we use bug detection as an example to solve these three challenges. But it's a software that pretends to be a real user. Some of the internet bad bots are a threat. For example, account takeover or data scrap. It's a security problem. So why bot detection is a good example for study these three challenges. First, limited of the labels in bot detection. We stand capture to the users. If they can if they cannot solve them, it is a strong indication they are bots. However, we cannot send capture to everybody. So there is a limitation in the coverage. Second, bots are changing because they attempt to evade existing defense. We collect three months of data over a year to monitor how bots change. Third, bots are a problem facing by different websites. We collect three months of the data and the three different websites. Each of them has a different functionality. And it is not trivial to use one detection for all different websites. With these three reasons, we think bot detection is a good example to study these challenges. In the next part of the talk, I will talk about our bot detection methodology and how we evaluate our system using real world data. First, we want to get the ground truth data of bots. And thanks our collaborator, Redware, we got such a data. Data is labeled, mainly from the CAPTCHA. Data are from three different websites, A, B, and C, and three months of data over a year. This is a large data set. In total, we got 23 million network requests. Let's talk about the design concept. There are two main concepts. First, if raw based detection works, use rules, not using machine learning. Let me give you an example about rules. For example, too many requests in a short period of time, it is an indication of the bots. Rule based detection is the company come up with. It is high precision and is self explanatory. Second, if rule cannot catch bots, we then use machine learning to do the detection. Because we think the value of ML is to catch bad behavior that cannot be expressed by rules. 
Here is our system diagram. With rollbacks detection, we can catch a good amount of bugs. We use ML back detection as the complementary to a rollbacks detection. You try to catch these advanced bugs. These bugs can evade by existing rules by possibly change their behaviors. In the rest of the talk, I will mainly focus on using ML to catch these advanced bugs. In order to catch them, we design a pipeline with several steps, and each step is trying to solve the different challenges. First is about feature engineering. You try to solve the different bugs for different websites, and the bugs are changing over time problem. We have the different bugs for different websites. Therefore, our detections end to be generalized. So we only select the basic network features instead of two specific ones. For each feature, we would like to remove the dependency so it has to not to use the raw data. By the way, our data is hashed. It is common when the company share their data for a researcher. Second, because bots are changing dynamically, we need to handle the new item for a real-time detection. Let me present the frequency encoding scheme to address these two challenges. The high-level idea is we convert item into a frequency of occurrence, and I would like to use URL to illustrate. The first step is we calculate URL frequency of occurrence in the data set. The second step is we build CDF. The x-axis stands for the frequency, and the y-axis stands for the CDF. The third step, we encode the URL based on its CDF. For example, URL A and B appear very frequently. Based on their location, we encode them into a high value. This encoding scheme can also handle a new item, like C we can assign it into a low value. Remember, spots are changing dynamically. In this work, we use sliding window to estimate the distribution over time. Our sliding window starts from here, and we'll keep moving and keep moving to update the data distribution. For each day, our sliding window encoding scheme will use the latest data to estimate the distribution and further encode the data. We use this dynamic encoding scheme to apply other basic network features, such as cookie and the browser. After we finalize the features, we introduce how to use data synthesis to train a classifier with the limited of labels. Let me formulate the problem first. We want to classify benign and malicious users correctly, and let's define layer distribution and use a cross entropy to define the optimization problem. In this work, we have two assumptions. First, we have representative benign data. Second, we have the limited and biased malicious data. And we propose our data synthesis technique to address the limited malicious data problem. Data synthesis is popular in many domain. Here is famous one again. It learns the distribution of existing data. It synthesizes data with some small variations. In other words, it mimics the existing data. But in security scenario, this is not sufficient because the bus keep changing. If you keep mimic the same existing bus. We are not going to synthesize useful data. Synthesis data is kind of like a guessing game. Given the data set, we need to guess where will the potential bus locate and how can we improve our guess accuracy. In this work, we use our domain knowledge and the assumptions to have the two different strategies to improve our gas accuracy. The first strategy, we think the potential bus will locate at a complementary of benign example. 
Blue Albina users, they are representative in our application with our existing bars. The gray ones are the potential bars located outside of blue region because blue one are, is representative. The second strategy is we synthesize data differently in the cluster and the outright region. In the cluster region, we found several bars are having a similar behavior. Likely, they are from same bar campaign. Let me illustrate you some example. Blue is benign, red is broad. In the cluster data synthesis, we carefully expand the region of the existing bars and it will become less aggressive when we are close to the benign region. And because we only have the limit of the data, we have to guess where will the potential bars locate in the future. That will be the outlier region. In this bus outlier region, we only have the limit of data. We cannot do the same thing because we have to synthesize more aggressively Otherwise, we cannot cover enough bar behavior. In our, in our data synthesis, we expand the bar region more aggressively than the cost of data synthesis. Let's look at the diagram to have a better understanding. Here is how typical gangs work in the high level idea. Generators synthesize some data and the discriminator is trying to distinguish the fake malicious data and the real malicious data. On the other hand, in our design, we have two generators instead of one because we have the need of outlier data synthesis and a cluster data synthesis. To be more specific, we use all of the data and use dbscan to divide the data into outlier and a cluster part. And we use two generators to learn their distributions. The task of the discriminator is also slightly different. The role of our discriminator is like the classifier. The task is to distinguish the benign users from the existing and the synthesized bots. Combining all the things together, we aim to make our classifier be able to catch bots even we only have the limited of labels. Finally, I would like to introduce some experimental results. About setting, we have several baselines in the work. However, for brevity in the rest of the talk, I will compare LSTN and our proposed method because we found LSTN has a better performance. The metric we use is F1 score, which is the better metric when the data set is in balance. First, let's look at how system perform when you combine the rules and the machine learning best detection. With only using the rules, we can catch about 80% of bots. With help of ML, we finally catch over 90% of bots including these advanced bars, they evade by ex existing rules. This result look promising, but it requires a large amount of labels. What if we only have the limited of labels, say 1%? Dark blue is LSTM with all of the labels, light blue is 1% of labels. For service A, they, are, they have a similar performance we found a found bus do not change much in the service A. However, performance drop a lot in service B and slightly drop in service C. Green is our proposed method with 1% of labels. We can see that our proposed method is close to LS10 using all of the labels. This result indicates it is helpful to use data synthesis when we have the very limited of labels. <clears throat> Next, how system perform after a long time? We use service B to illustrate. We first trained on August 2018 using 1% of labels, then test it on January, January 2019 and September 2019. Our model is more effective than LSTM to catch bots even after a long time. However, 
the performance is still degrading over time. One common method to deal with the model decay is retraining. We use 1% of the data from each month to do the retraining. It is light green in this plot. As a result, the performance bounces back after model retraining. This suggests the data synthesis is also helpful to retrain the model with the limited of data. We have other findings. For example, we compare other baseline, not just for LS10 in the evaluation part. We do a deep dive to show when our system fails and analysis about adversarial attacks. If you are interested, please take a look at our paper. Here are the conclusion. We propose a stream-based bar detection system with novel feature including scheme to catch advanced bars. These bars can evade by existing rules. We propose the data synthesis technique to address the limited label problems as results. We can catch the bad bars with the limited of labels. And thank you for watching my presentation. And I'm ready for the questions in the live Q&A sections.